In this video, I'm gonna show you a really cool alternate picking workout that you can use to develop awesome alternate picking. So stay tuned. Hey there, this is James for the Ask James Guitar Show and welcome to episode six, where it's all about alternate picking. Now today I'm gonna to show you some essential pointers to do with alternate picking, and I'm also gonna give you a really cool and easy to learn exercise which you can use as an alternate picking workout, just to get your alternate picking chops together. As normal, you can click on the link under this video to get the tab and lesson notes for this lesson. <coughs> so do that if you think you're gonna need that. But other than that, let's jump straight in and have a look at some important considerations when you're developing your alternate picking. One of the most important concerns when you're developing your alternate picking is relaxation. Your picking hand has to be very relaxed and just very soft. Any tension in your wrist, shoulder, elbow is going to fight you, so you've got to keep it really relaxed, really soft. I'm just going to do some picking on the G string now, and let's just zoom in on my right hand and have a look at a few other pointers. So you can see my right hand is very relaxed, very soft, and I'm making small movements with the pick. There's not much extra movement in terms of, you know, this going really wide of the string. The pick's staying very close to the string, very small movements, and I'm just using the tip of the pick. If you've got too much pick showing, that's going to cause you problems. So just the tip of the pick, hand very close to the string, very relaxed movements, just turning from the wrist. They're actually the main things to think about, but also when you're practicing your turn at picking, it's very easy sometimes to blame your right hand if you can't pull off an exercise, when actually your left hand is the problem. So your left hand also needs to be trained well so that it can keep up with your right hand. Kind of an obvious point, but it's really easy to overlook that. A lot of people blame their picking hand when actually it's this hand that's the problem. So, um, you know, as you work through these exercises, check that your left hand is also working efficiently. Let's zoom in now and have a look at some left hand principles. If I was playing a figure like this, just a sort of chromatic figure, you can see my left hand fingers are staying near to the fingerboard, near to the string, and they're staying down after I've picked a note. They're not going... There's not much extra movement. They're working quite effectively, quite efficiently, and making it uh, in less work if there's not so much extra movement. If I speed that up a little bit, you can see how even at a faster speed, they're still staying close and small movements. So they're just a few pointers to keep you going and there'll be others as we go through this lesson but I want to move on to the exercise now. So let's have a look at it and it's basically broken up into three sections. It's very chromatic, it's very sort of one fret at a time. Um, it's not a desperately musical exercise but it's great for developing all four fingers and developing a bit of basic alternate picking skill. So let's check it out. Here's what we're doing. We're starting off on the G string at the fifth fret and I'm going to go five, six, seven, eight. They're all four fingers so I'm going to go first finger, second finger, third finger, little finger and I'm picking that down, up, down, up like that. Down, up, down, up. The next part of the exercise is we move on to the B string and we do exactly the same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight frets. So we get this so far. Again, picking, straight alternate picking, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna move my little finger up a fret to the ninth fret. My other finger's gonna come too, so I'm basically moving my whole hand up a fret. 
And I'm going to go backwards now, 9, 8, 7, 6. And then I'm going to move my first finger back to the fifth fret. So we've got this. On to the next string now, the G string, I'm going to come back to my little finger at the eighth fret and I'm going to go eight, seven, six. So we've got this so far. Now in the exercise, we're going to play that four times round like this. Okay, now I've played it at that speed. You know, you start off whatever speed you need to. We're going to look at later on about how to use a metronome, how to build up speed in that way. But for now, I'm just playing it at that speed. Otherwise, it's going to, you know, this video is going to be massively long. So I just want to keep it moving forward. Now, that's the first part of the exercise, okay? Let's look at the second part of the exercise now. We're going to go 5, 6, 7, 8 on the B string. Then on to the next string, we're going to go 4, 5, 6, 7. So we've got this. Now we're going to move that little finger up a fret to the 8th fret and we're going to come down the top E string. 8, 7, 6, 5. Move down to 4. Then onto the B string we're going to go 8, 7, 6. Picking on that is down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. So it's just down, up the whole way with this particular exercise. There are alternatives to doing it this way, but this is a pretty good way to start, and that's how I'm teaching it in this video. So I'll play that little section of the exercise again. We're going five, six, seven, eight on the B, four, five, six, seven on the top E. Move it up a fret, and then there's the descending bit, eight, seven, six, five, down to four. And then onto the B string, eight, seven, six. And that's the second part of it, and we're going to play that four times. So we've got the first part four times and the second part four times. Let's have a listen to what that sounds like at a sort of moderate speed now. Okay, that's the first part of the exercise. Now the second part of it, really quite straightforward. We're on the top E string. It's all on the top E string. And we're gonna go five, six, seven, eight. Move it up a fret. And again. And again. So our little finger's now 11. Then we're gonna move our little finger up to 12 and come back down at 12, 11, 10, nine. Back down a fret, so 11, 10, 9, 8, and so on. Do again, and again. Move back down to 5 and do that whole sequence again, so we climb up. Little finger up and back down. Do it one more time. Right, now stop there. So we do that three times that bit, and then our little finger's back at eight, and we're just gonna descend down to five, and again, and again, and again. 
then end on the fifth foot on the top of these string. Let me play that section for you again, okay? That's the first time. Second time, third time. Now. And carry on down the neck. Okay, now you notice when I'm playing that, my fingers are lining up behind each other like I talked about earlier. There's none of this sort of thing happening. I'm using all four fingers. Okay, I'm not. Now that's kind of gonna hold you up if you do that kind of thing. Now, a lot of licks, I don't use all four fingers. I play a lot of stuff where I just use my first and third finger and most sort of rock blues guitarists everyone everyone does that a lot of licks work well that way but it can also be a limitation for certain things if you can't use all four fingers especially a little finger so an exercise like this really helps you develop that skill what i'm going to do now is put that whole exercise for you together just nice and slow just to wrap up this section of the video so here we go first lick and we do it four times Third time, fourth time, next bit, first time, do four on these, third time, fourth time, and the ascending bit, and down, and up, and down. And up again, last time now. And carry on down, all the way to the end. Okay, so that's the picking exercise. You can see a good workout for this hand, a good um, workout for your picking hand as well. Now, let's have a little think about how to build speed with this, and more importantly, how to make it rhythmic. Because one thing about alternate picking or any kind of any kind of picking really is it doesn't just want to be fast and clean it also has to have a rhythmic sort of drive to it so let's have a little think about how we can get that yes you guessed it the key thing really here is to use some kind of rhythmic uh, measuring tool like a metronome that you can use and you can gradually speed up and you can use it to improve your speed and also tell you if you're staying in time really essential so let's imagine you want to work on this exercise I've just given you and you want to use a metronome. What's the method that you should go through? Well, the first thing I would do is break the exercise up into fragments. I would take my first fragment of the exercise, which is this one. Okay, that one. And I would practice that in isolation before I start playing it two, three and four times. So I put my metronome on. Find a comfortable speed and go. Two, three, four. Now, you know, this is my speed, you might be different. And that's fine, you need to set it to your particular level. What you'll notice is I'm, my picking's rhythmic. It's solid and it's in time with the metronome, but there's also some rhythmic weight to each note. This is kind of important if you want your picking to have authority rather than just be like clean and fast but with no real weight or punch behind it so um when you've got that once like that you can gradually try playing it twice like this and then when you're good at that you can start playing it three times so that's the next thing try playing it three times two three four and then work up to four from there and then you can go back to doing it once but put the metronome up a few notches so I mean I'm at 84 now so I'm gonna put it up to like say a hundred and I go back to the original process of playing it once. Two, 
then twice. And so on. Now you notice that I'm checking that my first finger is on the click. There and there. And little finger there. And first finger there. 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 If they're in line with the click of the metronome, you know you're staying in time. If it's not, you might be speeding up or slowing down. So just note which notes in the exercise should be you should be playing as the metronome clicks. And if they're all in the right place and they're in time with each other, then your timing is probably pretty good. So you can build your speed up from there. Um, just put, bump it up two or three notches on your metronome at a time until you're getting to sort of speed you want and then just, just work up from there really. Spend a lot longer on each of those little steps of that process. But if I did that, you know, this video would be five hours long or something and no one would watch it. So I'm just trying to give you a kind of a, a summary of what I would do. Get your metronome at a comfortable speed, work on the exercise in fragments, join them up into longer bits and then gradually increase the speed from there. As a guideline, if you get up to about 160 for 16th notes um, on your metronome, that's a good sort of speed and you can work upwards from there. But just go at your own pace. You don't want to rush it. You don't want fast, sloppy playing. That's totally what you don't want. Okay, so you've got an alternate picking exercise there and a few pointers. Remember to stay nice and relaxed keep your pick close to the strings, work through this exercise at a sensible pace, start really slow, get it right before you speed it up. Absolutely essential and I've wasted a lot of time in my playing career practicing things too fast and badly. You've got to slow it down and get it right, it's absolutely essential. Work through this exercise in fragments too. You know, it's fairly long, especially if you haven't done anything like this before. You're gonna to need to break it up into each of the three sections, work on those slowly and separately before you start piecing them together. But the great thing about this exercise is it's kind of logical and it's really easy to learn. So you can kind of learn it quickly and dive straight into working on your picking pretty much straight away. Now, don't forget to get the tab for this lesson. You can click on the link under here. It has to tab for the exercise and all the, all the stuff from this video. So that will help you get the most out of this lesson. But other than that, thanks a lot for watching. If you found this video useful, please hit like. Please remember to subscribe, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And also, if you've got any comments or any questions which you'd like me to see, leave them below because I do try and reply to every single one of my YouTube comments. So leave it there and I'll do my very best to get in touch. But other than that, hope you found that really useful. So I look forward to seeing you again very soon in one of my videos. So take care till then and I'll see you next time.